Today is Wednesday, it's the 8th of February 2023 and we've come down to the Quan Miro Foundation. It's a museum, art gallery, a uh, place we've actually never been to before. It's right on our doorsteps. Walk around the gallery here. And, uh, this is the man himself, Juan Miro. And some of his artwork may be a little bit um, abstract. Very interesting. And this is just uh, well, very close to where we live and very, very close to where I used to teach. You might recognize Groucho over there. And this really is how I see a lot of the Miro works there. I'm finding that one a little bit difficult to interpret. Pictures from 1968. We have a, a school group here actually in the next uh, part. That's what you can hear in the background. Sketches do look very uh, infantile. This one here. Comes the sculpture. outside now in the, the garden area and uh, lots of the sculptures are here.
gardens. When Miro settled back into Mallorca, he had a reappraisal of all of his work that he'd done, and he was looking for new pathways, new things to do. So in 1973, this picture here is uh, one that he lacerated, he cut the canvas, and this was just one of an example of uh, ones where he damaged his own pictures in that reappraisal. Well, we do actually get a very good view over Mallorca from the museum. It is set quite high. And the gardens are much more extensive than I'd originally thought. And the gardens here are really quite nice, quite well kept, with a big range of different plants, the paths that go through. Dotted around there are benches where you can just sit and uh, let the day go by. 
And from this bench, we have this quite magnificent view through the trees, over the sea. You can imagine on a warm spring day, you find a really pleasant place to sit. If you do walk in the garden, so be aware there are a lot of steps. Elsewhere within the museum, um, people who are uh, in wheelchairs or find steps difficult are well catered for. There's lots of lifts and uh, assistance to get you up the, the slopes. Uh, but in the gardens, they don't have that, so be prepared for these uh, steps, which I've got to surmount now. And we get to the top of the ha to top of the steps. This is where we arrived at this uh, house, which is in a really spectacular position. Spectacular views from up here. Just catch the wind a bit, though. And we're just looking back into the hills there. And actually, that's Hanover, that's where we live. And this house is Saint Botaire, and it's the oldest building here. Uh, with its purchase by the artist in 1959, it became uh, Primero's second studio in Mallorca. Although it was intended originally as a, a sculpture studio, it became a refuge and a place where he worked on large paintings, as he had done in the, in the one below. Miro gradually built up the right atmosphere for his work through postcards, drawings and objects of widely differing origins. He also placed his own personal hallmark on the house through charcoal sketches on its walls in the style of graffiti. The streams and splashes of paint on the floor. Years later, the house would also feature engravings and lithography studios that are currently still in use. These legacies have played a key role in making the Fondation uh, Foundation such a dynamic and active centre. So one of my big criticisms of being in Mallorca is the amount of graffiti, and I wonder if it all started with Juan Miro. graffiti type work that he did on the walls here and the remains of the paint on the floor, the splashes there must be um, well, probably two meters or more square Pero 
buildings here were all modernised in 1994 and actually made into useful areas for artists. So there's workshops here for all manner of different sorts of arts, including uh, those which include things like uh, screen printing, ceramics, photography, and even the modern age of digital printing. So all of this now is in use by artists. This is referred to as the backyard of the first studio. And that's some interesting objects. Rescued or created from something somewhere. Well, I suppose it's certainly different, and if you're a, a lover of modern art and uh, the, the sort of the Picasso type, uh, Muro type uh, art, then I'm sure it'll be interesting to you. Um, as a scientist, I'm not sure as an artist. Well, I'm not sure either, I don't think. Not much uh, colour. Um, yeah, a lot of the things that you associate with Miro, which are the brightly coloured uh, shapes were not particularly on show. Uh, sculptures are interesting but very difficult for a scientist like me to fathom. The buildings itself, well they're quite interesting. Um, one very very concrete building and uh, the gardens, well, they're quite nice. Mm -hmm. And the old building, I, I was quite taken with that, quite like that and quite like the fact that uh, a lot of the uh, sketches that were done by Miro uh, we're actually still on the walls showing uh, how he got his ideas and then put them together to form uh, some of his sculptures. Uh, we paid €6.50, that was a pensioner's rate to come in. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we've come, I'm happy we've come. There um, are a lot of steps. Lots and lots of steps, so yeah, a bit difficult to get around. And there are magnificent views, so lots of things to see once you go up those steps, so might might be well worth it for that reason. So there's a car park outside as well, and it is on a main bus route. So uh, well, make up your own mind. So thanks very much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. So bye for now. Bye.